Hey there, I'm your host Lesoe, and this is part two of the Wavespawn system. So let's begin. Let's start by going into our content drawer and into our Wavespawn system folder, and we'll create a new folder called Enemy Spawners. Now inside here, we'll create a blueprint class of type actor, and let's call it BP underscore enemy spawner. Now inside, we want to grab a static mesh, like so. I'll do, 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 grab a cylinder, and I'll do 0 0.01 on the Z, just so I know where to spawn in. And while having this selected, we'll do a sphere collision, like so. And let's give it a sphere radius of, let's say, 60. And this is our spawner. So let's go ahead and go to the event graph. And over here, we want to create a variable for our enemy queue, because we want to be able to spawn them and add them to our enemy queue. So we'll go ahead and call this our enemy queue. And we want this to be of type class of our parent enemy. So we'll do pp underscore enemy base class reference. And we also want this to be an array because we're spawning in multiple, not just one. So let's go ahead and create a function called spawn enemy. Now in here, we'll grab our queue. And the first thing we'll do is check our index. Is it valid? If our index is valid, that means there's something in the queue and we can spawn it. And if it's not valid, the queue is empty. So let's grab a branch, plug that into here. And if the enemy queue is valid, we'll grab our enemy queue and we'll get a copy of the first one in line, like so. And we'll do spawn actor from class. Now the spawn transform will be the actor's location. So the spawner's location. So let's get actor, get actor transform. There we go. Plug that in. And you always want to spawn this in. So try to try to adjust location, but always spawn. That's important. And out of here, we'll just check if this is valid. It's because sometimes there is an error and they don't come out as they should. So we're checking if it's valid. If it's not valid, it won't do anything and it'll try again. So from here, uh, we made a event dispatcher in the previous episode on when they die. So over here, let's do bind event on enemy, enemy eliminated, enemy, there we go, on eliminated. And after we bind it to it, we'll do an event here shortly. We want to remove our enemy queue. Uh, we want to remove the index because we spawned it in. And the next enemy will take its place. So the next enemy will become index zero and so on. So we've done that. Next, let's create a new variable called spawned enemies. And this will be of type uh, object reference, enemy parent, but uh, object reference. Now, the reason we're doing that is because we have a timer and this timer is going to clear all the enemies uh, when the timer runs out. So grab your spawn enemies and we'll do add to it this spawned enemy. This will be our array of spawned enemies. And let's just reroute this so we can see it a little bit more cleanly where this is going to. All right, and at the very end, we want to do a return node to let us know that this has been successful. So get your output, type in success, and we'll take it true. Now, if we haven't spawned this in, do a copy paste, this will return false. So that's that. Now, for the event, bind event to an enemy eliminated, will create a event, not a custom event, because it won't let us since it's in a function. Create a matching event called on enemy eliminated. We'll copy this, put it in our event graph and destroy it here. And now we should be able to select it. And if I compile, there should be no errors. Cool. 
So uh, let's also go ahead and create another function called add enemy to queue. In here, we want to grab our da -da -da, enemy queue and we want to add to it this uh, new item that we have here, but we'll rename it to our enemy class. Now, once we've done that, we want to check if our spawner has uh, anything inside it. So we'll do get overlapping actors and we'll make sure it's our enemy parent. So enemy base. And we'll once again check is the index valid. Now, if it is valid, that means there's something in there. So we don't want to spawn anything in. But if it's not valid, so on false, we'll do spawn to do, do spawn enemy. And that's that. So let's go back into our event graph. In the event graph on event begin play, we want to do a set timer by event. And from here, we'll do a custom event. Try spawn enemy. And this will be on looping so you can set the timer for yourself. Uh, I'll have it spawn every five seconds. Make sure it's looping and we'll do spawn enemy. We should also create another custom event to clear all enemies. Once our timer is uh, has run out, this event will be called. We'll do a for uh, for each loop. So for every single enemy spawned from this uh, spawner, we'll do a is valid because it could not be valid because you've already killed it and we won't get an error and drag out from the array element and do destroy actor. Now make sure you drag out from the array element, plug it in here. Otherwise, you'll just destroy the spawner. So we'll go ahead, put that there and let's also get our wave game mode. And here we will do a event that we need to create on our wave game mode. So with that, let's compile and save and head over to our game mode, which is right here. Inside of our game mode, we'll go ahead and create a function that's going to be called on enemy eliminated. There we go. Now this event will be calling inside of our spawner. So let's go back and do on enemy eliminated like so. And that's our spawner done, so we can safely compile, save and exit. Back inside of our game mode on enemy eliminated, we want to create a few variables to take care of how many enemies we have, the limit and so on. So we'll begin by creating enemies remaining. This will be of type integer. Next, we also want to know how many enemies we've killed. So we'll create enemies killed. We have the gold collected, so that's there. We also want to know about our total enemies. So total enemies. And we want to know about our enemy limit. All right, so let's get started. On enemy eliminated, we want to grab our enemies remaining. And we want to decrement this value by one, letting us know that we've killed one. So whatever the value of this is, we're taking one away from it. And we're going to do the opposite with our enemies killed. We want to do increment. So we're adding one to enemies killed. And next, we want to have an event dispatcher to let us know what information we should display on our UI when we create it. So let's go ahead and create an event dispatcher on enemy killed. Now in here, we want few values. We want to know the enemies killed. We want to know the total enemies and perhaps and the gold collected. So in the inputs, if you select it, let's create a parameter integer and we'll have first our enemies killed. Next, we'll have our total enemies. And we also want to know about the collected gold. So gold collected. And with that, we can drag this out, call it. And we can start plugging in our information. 
So our enemy skilled will come from this. So this updates the enemy skilled variable and basically sets it for us. Now the total enemies will grab in here and we'll go back later to populate all of this. For the gold collected, we want to get the gold collected and plug that in there. And if we grab G or if we grab everything and press Q, it'll line it up for us nicely. Next, we want to do a branch and we want to check if our enemies remaining is less than the enemy limit. So grab your enemies remaining and do less than the enemy limit. So we're checking in here if we should add another enemy to the queue or if we've cleared all of the enemies and should progress to the next wave. So if it is false, what we want to do is we want to add an enemy to the queue. So let's go ahead and create a new function called add enemy to queue. Inside of our add enemy to queue, the first thing we want to do is get our spawners, which we don't have. So let's go ahead and create a new function called get enemy spawners. There we go. And here we want to do a get all actors of class, which will be our enemy spawner. And we'll do a set. So promote to variable, and we'll call this the enemy spawners. There we go. So let's head back into our to do add enemy to queue. And inside of here, we want to grab our to do, do enemy spawners. And we want to get a random spawner. And we want to do add enemy to queue. Now the value in here from the enemy class we need to create. So let's go ahead and create another function called get enemy from pool. Inside of our get enemy from pool function, we want to create a new variable called enemy pool. Now this you want to be a map. So change your first variable type to be your enemy parents class. And the second one will be the integer. Now, the reason for that is, is because you want to know what type of enemy you have and how many of that type you have. So you could be your two archers, your four swordsmen, etc. So grab this and we'll do a keys node. And what keys node does is it gets that type of enemy. So your two swordsmen, two wizards, etc. From here, we'll get a random array item. So it gets random, your random warrior, random archer, whatever class it may be. And we want to promote this to a local variable. Well, let's call it local underscore enemy class. Like so. Now, from here, we want to get our enemy pool once again. And we want to do find. Can it find that class we just selected? And we'll do a branch to see if it can or not. Whoop. Uh, that goes there. Like so. And from the find value, we want a minus one because we're subtracting, we're trying to spawn one in. Okay, let's do that. Now, if this value is less than or equal to zero, whoop, I messed that up. Bring that back. If it is true, that means we don't have anything else to spawn in. So we want to get our enemy pool and we want to completely remove it. So remove. And we're removing our local enemy class there. Uh, do, 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 plug that into true. Now, if this value is false, we want to update it. So we'll do add. And we're going to update it with our local enemy class by setting this value to be one less. So from here, drag that in there, reroute it, and this should look better. Like so. So this is our function almost complete. At the very end, we want to do a return node and we want to return our local enemy class. So drag that into there. And let's call this the enemy class. And also drag that into here. So let's recap. We're getting a random enemy from the pool. Uh, we're setting it and we're trying to find it. We're minusing one from it. If it uh, if the value is 
equal to zero. We don't have it anymore, so we just want to completely remove it. And if we do, we just want to update it by taking one away from it and then returning that class. So let's compile and save. And let's head back into our add enemy to queue. We will get our get enemy from pool. You also want to make this pure like that and connect it into here. Compile and save. Next, let's go back to our on enemy eliminated. And from false, that the enemy's remaining is less than the enemy limit, we want to add enemy to queue right there. On true, we are going to get our enemies remaining. And we're going to see if this value is equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, that means we've killed all the enemies. There's nothing else left to kill. So we can progress to our next wave. Now, how we will do this is we'll create a transition uh, node. So let's go ahead and in our custom or in our event graph, it's a custom event called interlude. And from here, we'll do a set timer by event, like so. And now this time, you can promote it to a variable if you want to, but this is the transition time between each wave. So let's say we set it to five seconds and we'll have this uh, event here and we'll do custom event and we'll do begin next wave. And here we'll create a new function called our start wave. And we'll also have our end wave function. Close those like so. And in our event graph, this will start our new wave. And this will end our wave. But before we do, let's grab this guy and promote to variable, calling it the interlude timer. Boom. Plug that into there, like so. And if we go back to on enemy eliminated, let's grab our do 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 interlude function. And once we are on break on the transition, we want to let our game node know. So create a variable for that on break. And we'll set this to be true, like so. And that's pretty much it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll be creating the majority of the work that needs to be done in our game mode in order for our wave system to work. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.